on your side. This is WHAS 11 News. If it looks like somebody was asleep at the wheel, they're going to have to answer for this child's untimely death. That's the lawyer representing the family as investigators work to determine what killed a teenager inside a Kentucky detention center. Coming up this morning at 9, how long the family says they'll wait before taking legal action. Plus, authorities are a step closer to identifying the human remains found in Harrison County. The person police believe may be the victim. And it's a major project that will forever change Louisville skyline. What you'll find inside the new Omni Hotel that's now under construction. Good morning, Kentuckiana. It's 9 o'clock and 37 degrees out. I'm Michaela McDonald. Taking a live look outside this morning, it is 37 degrees out. Definitely will feel a little bit more like spring later this afternoon. Our Reed Yaden joins us now with a look at the forecast. Reed. Indeed, Michaela, we've got a beautiful day underway already. A cool morning. Let's go right to your Saturday forecast. If you are uh, a late riser this morning, we'll get ready for a good day. Just make some plans to get out of doors and enjoy it. We're live this morning at the half million square foot boat, RV and sports show at the south wing of the fairgrounds. That'll put you in the mood and this forecast will too. We're in the 50s by noontime. Then this afternoon we top out. You heard it right. That's not a typo. Low 60s. I like to say that number it comes out real easy. We're standing here with uh, Pamela Follett with the show and Pam doors are about ready open for today. We'll open in an hour, 10 a.m. till 9 tonight. And then you're back again tomorrow. 11 to 5, to, or sorry, 10 to 5 tomorrow. 10 to 5 tomorrow. You've got two big days here at the show. A uh, big part of the show is Tom Stennett of uh, Derby City RV. And Tom, uh, you, you've got a nice representation here of products. Well, we try to provide yeah. something for everybody. We're, we'll look at that toy hauler over there in a minute. Those are always popular. It is. Uh, you've got it all, though, from the small to the big stuff. And we're going to tour one of the big coaches behind us here in just a little bit. We're uh, at the show today, a half a million square feet under roof here. You're going to find whatever you want, boats, motorcycles. Everything fun under the sun, <laughs> ATVs, boats, RVs. We've got it all. Everything fun under the sun. I like that. Sun, we've got it today. Clouds tomorrow, but we'll still be warm right through the weekend. Michaela, I know uh, one of the stories we have is a uh, uh, death of a longtime uh, Kentucky political figure. That and more. Back to you. Thank you, Reed. And that is breaking news just coming into our newsroom. Civil rights leader Georgia Powers has died at the age of 92. Powers was the first African-American to be elected to the Kentucky Senate. She served in the legislature for 21 years. Powers was known as a confidant for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. She joined him and other leaders in 1964 during a march in Frankfort, Kentucky. The goal was to pressure lawmakers into opening up public accommodations to all African-Americans. But the protests were not enough. That I need to be someplace where I can make policy. I said I need to be, and I had no idea what I was talking about. Our news partner, The Courier Journal, says Powers was suffering from congestive heart failure. She died this morning just before 4 o'clock. And over the years, WHAS 11 has brought you many stories featuring the life and legacy of the civil rights leaders. Our Rachel Platt is one of the journalists who had the opportunity to sit down and talk with Powers. She joins us now on the phone with how much of an impact Powers had on the community. Good morning, Rachel. Hey there, Michaela. And you know, you said the opportunity to interview Georgia Powers. I would say the honor because it's one of those times as a journalist where I got nervous because I knew what a force this woman was. I mean, what a national figure. And, and what a place at the table she had for really changing the face of the civil rights movement. And I remember interviewing her, and she was just a pistol, is how I would explain it, just full of vigor and just still so passionate about civil rights. Because like you said, she was on the national forefront. I mean, she was huge in changing the law here in Kentucky and part of the national civil rights movement with, with Dr. King and everything that her handprint is really on. And even after retirement, that's when I interviewed her, she was still the voice. She was still the person who you went to, to to find out what she thought on certain things. And it was about that time that she was being honored here in Louisville. If you remember, they named part of the Shawnee Expressway after her, the uh, Georgia's, Georgia Davis Powers Expressway. And she was very proud of that and proud to be remembered because 
she wanted to be that voice that, that people came to even after she retired and, and still involved so much in that community. And Rachel, this is obviously very new that she just passed away this morning. Do you have any ideas of how the community might want to honor her legacy? You know, I think it will be huge, and it's such a one-two punch for this community because we reported yesterday on Judge uh, Ben Shove, who had passed away, also a prominent civil rights leader. So these are two losses uh, for the state of Kentucky, national figures, really both of them, for all of the work they did. And I'm sure it will be a, a huge way that we honor her. I don't know that that all has been decided, but anytime you have such a national figure as Georgia Davis Powers, I'm sure there will be a huge community outpouring and in other things, I'm sure, to come to be named after her. I was noticing today our, our news director had tweeted out Kentucky Democrats. So statewide people are already noticing, and I'm sure nationally as well. And one funny story, Michaela, you know, after they named the expressway uh, after her, I remember in a story that I did on air, I called it the Shawnee Expressway. And when I got off the set, my phone rang at my desk, and it was Georgia. And she called me and said, Rachel, that is not the name of that expressway <laughs> anymore. Call it the Georgia Davis Powers Expressway. And that was one of my favorite stories with her, that she called me and said, you got it wrong, girl, and you better fix it. That's named after me now. And I just love that about her. She'd pick up the phone, and, boy, she'd correct you. Well, Rachel, thank you so much for sharing your memories and your insight into Powers' life and legacy. And here at WHAS 11, we'll continue uh, to follow this story as it continues to develop uh, throughout the day. And it could take several weeks before authorities are able to officially identify the human remains found in Harrison County. Officials believe it to be the body of 56-year-old George Ronald Schmidt Jr., a missing person last seen in 2014. The cold case reopened Thursday when a construction worker discovered human remains under a bridge in Mockport, Indiana. The Harrison County Sheriff's Department worked with Indiana State Police and forensic anthropologists from the University of Indianapolis to excavate the bones and start the difficult process of identifying who they belong to. Officials say it was a wallet found with the remains that led them to consider 56-year-old Schmidt. This discovery still leaves, leaves many unanswered questions for Schmidt's family. It's my understanding that uh, this is bringing closure. Uh, of course, they didn't want to hear that potentially a family member may have be dead, but uh, I believe it did bring some closure to them. And this is just a preliminary identification. Police say they won't be able to confirm his identification until they match dental records and DNA. And we're learning more about the teen found dead at a youth detention center in Hardin County. The teen's family has now hired an attorney. We now know that 16-year-old Janiah McMillan was living in Mary Hurst home for girls before her death on January 11th. She was in the process of being reunited with her mother. It's still unclear why she was even in the Lincoln Village Regional Detention Center in Hardin County in Elizabethtown, the place where she mysteriously died earlier this month. An autopsy for McMillan didn't reveal a cause of death. Now a family, her family and concerned residents are waiting to see what toxicology results details. Ron Hillerick is representing McMillan's mother. The family feels devastation and grief right now. That's all they feel at the moment. They're numb. Everybody is numb. When a, a child is put in a state facility, they're put in there to protect the child from the child's self or others. And it's difficult to understand how a child could die on somebody's watch in a state-run facility. Hillerick says the family will wait to see how the investigation plays out before taking legal action. We reached out to the Department of Corrections for a comment, but we have not heard back. Earlier this week, they issued a statement saying an employee of the facility didn't do all 15-minute bed checks and is on special investigative leave with pay. They're also reviewing video to see if all policies were followed by staff, and they say McMillan showed no signs of distress before her death. Construction of the new Omni Hotel in downtown Louisville is officially underway. Mayor Greg Fisher, the Metro Council, and representatives from Omni Hotels were on hand for a groundbreaking ceremony Friday. The move follows a three-year battle over the preservation of the old water company building, which once stood where the hotel is being constructed. The Omni Hotel and Resort will feature 612 hotel rooms topped with 225 luxury apartments. It will also include a restaurant, rooftop pool, bar and grill, and an urban market store. Mayor Greg Fisher believes the hotel will change a dormant block into one of the most vibrant spots in the city. This is a lot more than a building that's going to be happening here. This is going to be a nerve center. It's going to be the center of our city. 
Once complete, the Omni Hotel will be the tallest hotel in Louisville. The project is expected to be completed in the spring of 2018. Good morning, Kentuckiana. It's 910 and 37 degrees out. A new bill is headed to the Senate. The large benefit families of paramedics could receive if it's passed. Okay, we know 